Hello, it's Sasa, and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to show you guys how to um, hem swimsuits, elastic. So here's this is so this is a strap of an elastic. I'm going to show you how to hem it. I've already surged this on like this, and it's important to have um, to use stretch needles. Stretch needles are built differently than regular ones because I have rubber elastic, but if you use the cloth elastic. That rubber is a bit harder to find in some places, but I find this much better. This is what Speedy uses in the more professional um, and indus industry standards. They use a, a rubber, but you most um, craft stores at Walmart you can get the cloth elastic, and the cloth elastic. If you do not have a stretch needle, when you sew it on the right side, you'll find out that some of the elastic little like strings will kind of like all stick out and they will look really ugly. So make sure you use stretch needles and I recommend the Smith's brand. If you buy the cheaper ones, they don't do that great needles. You have to, the German ones are the best ones. So I recommend these ones. And for overlocking, you can either use these two stitches. Um, this is the zigzag, so it looks like obviously zigzag. And I call this one the box zigzag. I normally use this one, but you can use either or, whatever your preference is. See, this is what the box one looks like there. Okay, so let's get started. So, we have the elastic edge. And what we do, is stretch. You fold this in and make sure, like, the edge, you don't want it, like, to fold too much and then you have all this bagginess. So make sure you fold right along. And you can do it a couple times. I normally, like, you stretch it out a little bit. So place your thumbs here and you just fold over with your index fingers. And then you have to hold it stretched like this. And you place it underneath. The presser fret goes down and then you put your needle in. And backstitch. When you're first doing this, I recommend learning how to do it from the underneath first, like this way, because it's easier to hold the elastic. And then you take it and you stretch it out, fold it, and you hold it. And I always, because it's hard for it to feed properly because it's elastic, so you don't want to force it or else you'll destroy your feed dogs. So you kind of hold it gently, and then you go along slowly. No, no need to rush too fast. Okay, when you get along to a joint here, because the fabric is thicker, you want to go even slower. And sometimes you can even use the hand wheel to go manually. Okay, so I showed you how to do it this way. So you, you continue, you fold, and then you, you sew like this. But sometimes I like to do it from the opposite side because that way you can see what you're doing. And sometimes when my machine has been working too much, it gets like, has a couple fits and it doesn't like to work for me. And then normally the thread gets all pissed off and then I get pissed off. And then I just like stop sewing for the whole day. So instead of that, you sew from the front. And that way, so this way is a bit more difficult because you can't really hold and make sure the elastic's exactly on the edge. So you have to fold it over like this. And once again, you hold the top and the bottom place it underneath, press your foot down and then your needle goes down, back stitch. And then this way when you sew, you have to make sure I like, your hand has to come underneath. See this is the piece right here. And I use my thumb and that way you can feel where the elastic is and you push it underneath. And whenever I sew along, I always use my fingers to feel to make sure the elastic is completely on the edge. And then you hold. That way, this way, when you sew, you can see if it like the thread gets messed up right away. That way it will stop and you won't waste so much time. And also if it gets messed up, because most of the time it, the mess ups is on the, underneath. It's because the bobbin. And you have to adjust the bobbin tension and that's all really annoying. But anyways, so since you sew on this side, if it's like a little bit minor things are messed up, it's okay. Like not anyone's going to see it anyway. So as long as the outside it stays really look good. So then you just continue along. Another tip when you're sewing like longer distances, well anything, when you fold it over, you really want to make sure that you, you sew it flat because if you sew it with like all these bunches here when the thread goes on when you wear it because it will stretch right it'll be all oh, these ugly bunch, bunches so you want to make sure you sew it flat so you can stretch it out a little bit but you want to just you let the feed dogs do their work you're just there to hold it in place and with time you'll get better at holding this but the first time like I did it was really horrible and like so ugly and this thing was all bunched and yeah so make sure you hold it flat Okay, so here's the finished. So you can see the, the little square boxes going on, and then the underneath looks like this. So that's it. Hope you learned something, and thanks for watching. Bye bye.